You know, one of my favorite Corey Taylor songs is SpongeBob SquarePants. I uh, really enjoyed that. SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Corey's really cool. Uh, I know Slipknot's had a lot of uh, drama lately, and I have no idea why because I don't do drama. Obviously, my camera don't do straight. <laughs> <laughs> takes after its master <laughs> or whatever. So, Slipknot, I was going to have Gregory here do either Psychosocial or uh, Before I Forget or Vermilion or the, the Resident Evil song. I think that's the name of it. And the um, or Duality. Because we've done, no, we've done Before I Forget and we've done Late and Bleak. Um, but we found a song surfacing, and on a, what was the name of the magazine? Uh, Kerrang. It's an online magazine Kerrang. that I remember back in the day when it was a standard hold-up magazine. But yep, yeah, it was a top 20. I, I, think, all those, I think I was in, a, I was in an argument in the tool chat room. I think, because somebody said magazine. When I, I think all these articles we see digitally, they still are physical copies of the magazine. But I could be wrong. And there um, might be some you can like order the physical copy, but they don't like. Yeah, that's, that's basically yeah. what I mean. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't think there's stores anymore. Um, so, servicing, we are doing a live. Number one on that list. Dynamo Open Air 2000. Right. And um, the moment you realize that the, most of the crowd is probably in their late 40s or now maybe early 50s. <laughs> that's cool. So Joey this is from this uh, from Slipknot's debut album. Came out in 1999. So, wow! So this is off of the same album as, as White and Bleed. Yes. Man, well, I, and I may have heard this, guys. I, I read the lyrics. We'll read them here in a minute. I um, didn't recognize it by the lyrics, so let's get into it. Do it. And, um, I've heard it. We'll do it like the other reactions, and I'll let him react. I won't influence him. With too many folks giving. <laughs> yep, my eyes to it. Kick sickness here at Dynamo 2000. This song is called Surface. Sorry, I have my layout layups all fucked up. <laughs> we'll start that over. Kick sickness here at Dynamo 2000. This song is called Surface. Started, I thought it was like a, a heavy metal country song. It was like, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> I said, and then it, <laughs> and then it went into jump, jump, like House of Pain on damn metal. <laughs> Which the singer for House of Pain ended up becoming the singer for um, 
Everlast. No. Everlast, yeah, that's right. Okay. So, why did you get them Everclear mixed up for me? <laughs> yes, it's the Ever. Yeah, that was a like a tortured yeah, sounding riff that they started off with, and Corey Taylor's neck is fucking enormous. Like, he could get a chest tattoo on his neck. Like, I've heard some people mention that before, and before I looked at him, I was like, it doesn't look that big. Here, it's like, these things as big as my waist, for God's sake. Which is good, because head head banging is bad for your neck. So, you got all that support, that helps. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he does have a tattoo on your neck, I'm pretty sure. But, but I, know, I know what you mean. Oh, 2000! This song is called Surface given there you know how many uh how <laughs> those they have like those videos that are taken like inside a hurricane 
and it's just just flowing every flying everywhere and the sky is dark and it's chaos. That is the audio equivalent of one of those videos. That <laughs> Here it is. If you all running out of ways to run, I can't see, I can't be over and over and under my skin. All this attention is doing me in. Fuck it off. Fuck the world. Fuck everything that you stand for. Don't belong. Don't exist. Don't give a shit. Don't ever judge me. Pinky poo, the parts exposed. Take your shape. Take your shape. I remember it under my skin. All this momentum is doing me in. Fuck it off. Fuck the world. Fuck everything that you stand for. Don't belong. Don't exist. Don't give a shit. Don't you ever judge me. And don't you fucking judge me. Burn! <laughs> you got all my love living in your own hate. Creeping hold me in hard step, no fate. Show you nothing, but it, but I ain't holding back. Every damn word I say is a sneak attack. Damn, it's good. When I get my hands on you in a fucking thing that you can do, <laughs> this is easy to read because it's like rapping. Um, like metal rapping. Like rap metal, metal rap. Rapple, you know. <laughs> <laughs> get this cause, you're never going to get me. Ooh, and I am the very disease you pretend to be. I am the push that makes you move. Fuck it off, it's world. Fuck everything you stand for. Don't belong, don't exist, don't give a shit. Don't you ever judge me. Fuck it off, it's world. Yeah, burn, motherfucker. Burn. We don't need no water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was... Uh... I didn't share his tab. I'm sorry. Here they are. Yeah. <laughs> that was the uh, quite a fast-moving wall of sound that had a lot going on. I like like Corey Taylor's natural like his speaking voice and his clean singing voice are actually really nice sounding. And so I like how he alternated between like spoken lines and that you know that harsh bellow he has going, that scream. Um, the I also like he does remind me of like uh, Bruce Dickinson in the sense that. No matter how much energy he's pumping out vocally, he still has even more to rile the crowd up to get them engaged. And that definitely seems like a concert that you would leave with literally every inch of your body hurting, but with a giant smile on your face. Which is how metal should be, I think. That's what these guys said. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh. Uh, um, I'll never forget the server tool video when I was like, Things doing hand look. I can move my hands up fast, so I never leave the house. <laughs> uh, um, this is what I felt like just happened. Just like I just like <laughs> took a dose of something. I'm not sure what it was. Uh, I mean, not my favorite song, Sitting Lights, but damn, aggressive, um, energetic, and uh, let, me, let me change the name. Of, put to the, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Um, so, I proposed a question at a charismatic voice patron chat, and I asked, because she's real, all about, well, about the Will Ramon, Will, Will Ramos, and, um, um, uh, Lorna Shore, and harsh vocals and putting, like, tubes down his throat and all that, and I, I know from having a holy boat myself, but that, that sucks. It's not fun. But I propose the question, if not Slipknot, who brought harsh vocals to mainstream before? And there are several people that said Slipknot didn't, but I didn't hear no answers or no... Um, <laughs> I didn't hear no other names so were I think, around before Slipknot. I think one of the problems was, I don't mean to interrupt, but I think a lot of people were getting different ideas as to what harsh vocals were. Like, I'm, we're not talking about people just adding fry or grit to their sound, like a Jimmy Barnes or something like that. Well, I we're mean, talking, Halloween horror movie don't look like the horror movies nowadays, but... Yeah. But when like that come out... Yeah, that sustained kind of... Um, sorry, False fold heavy, uh, you know, more of distortion than pitch type sound I even like I can't think of a band that made that radio friendly uh before Slipknot I mean that's when you, I, I realize it has evolved and mm -hmm. that's I think why they were not Slipknot but that's pretty fucking harsh man that's pretty fucking fast yeah <laughs> I mean, it's 
it's heavy and I, I was I was alive and breathing when it came out and everybody was like what the hell is like the the people who associate with the heaviest death hardcore whatever genre metal now as who was listening to Slipknot then yeah so there were no people that listened to anything heavy unless it was like guar and they were idiots because <laughs> well they're just like green jello they weren't I mean, yeah. they were, well that I think they were trying to be serious but it was laughable I mean uh, yeah, Gore was. Uh, I think those guys are like lawyers uh, for their day jobs. So yeah, it's definitely a joke band. But um, I think like that. corn, corn also different kind of harsh vocal. But that beatbox scatting, I mean, it was a vocal no one had heard of. There was a lot of experimentation in vocals. Uh, 99, 2000, 2001. So I don't know if anybody knows a band before Slipknot that made it mainstream with this that, heavy a sound or, or just just harsh vocals i mean because yeah. Corey can sing uh stained had very harsh vocals too and they were out uh, let's see what your dysfunction came out i think it was more like the two oh three oh four oh five um but aaron lewis can get as harsh as you want to get and then sing as clean as you want to sing um eyes wide open is a great example that song was very 1999 very okay well they're same year all right yeah so tools 92 corn's 93 slipknot's 99 stain's 99 yeah it says pretty good pretty good little class the rage against machine um of course alice in chains and that band with smells like spirit on teens or something and um Soundgarden so yeah man I mean this is what pushed hair metal out <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry it just is I think the only band that survived hair metal was Iron Maiden and um for good reason I don't think they were hair metal and that's a bad coin term just like grunge yeah. is a bad term but mm, yeah. at this point it has to be owned I mean there's no you can't sing. You can't talk about poison and death lever and um, Motley Crue, especially without using the word hair metal. It's just really hard. Um, or glam metal. I think they have changed that to glam. That sounds worse. So you got a perm in your hair. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah, there's some fantastic other words for it. Butt rock, boodle rock, that sort of thing. Fake. What I call it. <laughs> I mean, you're they're singing about a lifestyle. To quote Chris Cornell, that we will never ever have. And when grunge came out, it was like the kids in your school. Like it showed you that real people can write real songs and become popular doing it. So, mm. that's all you got, bud? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, then. Well, um. So, well, servicing, so that's your. Not sure I would call it the best Slipknot song, as Danny said, but damn, I mean, that's one to put on when you got some stuff to do. That is a walking oh. song that will turn it into a run very quickly. Yeah, or it sounds like Maynard looked when he danced back in the day. <laughs> that's a very. <laughs> that's, I, and you yeah. all know what I mean. Yeah, and the reaction. You listen to Slipknot, you at least know who Tool is. And when yeah. Maynard done all this damn crazy ad, the weirdest dance in the world, the walk like a large Egyptian or whatever, I don't know, man. But this sounded like what he looked like. They should make a video of him dancing to this. <laughs> all right, mental health is real. We're great examples of it. We uh, advocate mental health. Talking about it, talking about stigmas and. Um, Corey Taylor's is, lyrics are really good as far as painting uh, pictures regarding states yeah. of mental health, no doubt. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I gotta give a shout out. I don't care who don't like it. I don't think a bunch of people are just butt hurt. But David Draymond has done an awesome job with the story yeah, and, no and doubt. mental health. And, um, Classic, I like the story. When I found out down with the sickness, which I didn't find out until. 
fairly recently was about like you know disabled kids to get picked on um, letting their hate go in a positive way through music and get down with the students. I didn't realize that. I had no idea. So, yeah. All right. Much love. Likewise. Maggots. You freaking maggots. <laughs> so I'm going to tool your maggots and he's blammy. <laughs> nah, much love, guys. Be good. <laughs>